Hi and welcome back to the channel. This week we're going to be talking about video equipment. Why? What the hell's that going to do with the channel? Well, so many people have been asking me either on the channel here or via email and on LinkedIn, what's the video equipment that you use? So I'm going to show you all of the video equipment that I use this week coming right up. Okay, so what video equipment do I use? Now let me say first off, I am not a videographer. I am not a professional video person. I'm a bit of a, an amateur. I used to do lots of stills photography as a kid. Uh, and then I got into video probably, oh, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. Um, and over the last three or four years, uh, obviously I've recognized the benefit of video for marketing for my different businesses and you know on YouTube. And I, and I love doing these YouTube channel so I actually run three different channels at the moment so I'm shooting a lot of videos so let me show you what you need and what I use and it's two totally different things and you'll understand what I mean in a moment so when I started off doing videos um, and I started doing them to promote events and things like that for my management consulting business you know what I did I shot them on my phone and that was a few years back now do not underestimate uh, the value of phones to shoot video. Uh, professional video people will tell you, you know, they're shocking. The quality of video that they shoot is amazing. There are some downsides, which I'll talk about. <coughs> Excuse me, but don't underestimate just using your phone. Be careful about um, aspect ratios and things like that. So uh, I know people say shoot in, in this format, portrait for Facebook, shoot in this format for other platforms. Just make sure that you're shooting in the right platform. Uh, and also on most phones, you can set the aspect ratio to you know, four to three, 16 to nine, things like that. Um, I generally use 16 to nine because that's kind of a landscape thing and it's what we're used to when we're watching TV. So any good phone will shoot great video. I like Samsungs. Um, I used to have iPhones. I like Samsungs because the cameras in them are amazing. My, this is a Galaxy, a Samsung 8, I think. Um, I actually used a Samsung Note 3 about five years ago to shoot some video while I was on a, a very long hiking trip. And I turned that into a mini movie, an HD mini movie all shot on my phone. And that was five years ago. The quality on this is outstanding. Uh, there's a couple of downsides with uh, using your phone, of course. One is the sound is awful. So I'll show you how to get over that in a second. Um, the other is, depending on the phone that you've got and the features on the phone, you don't have a lot of control over depth of field. So we're getting a little bit technical there, but you know, if, if sometimes it's nice if my face is in focus to have the background blurred because that isolates the subject from the background. You'll notice on this video it's not, um, and I'll explain why. It's because of the video camera that I'm using. So depth, depth of field is a consideration, whether you want to have some cool stuff where the speaker's in focus but the background's blurred, you, you need a different type of camera. So uh, other than that, phones are great. I actually have two of these. Uh, and very often when I'm traveling, I'm shooting my videos on these and I have two of them set up on little tripods. So I get, you know, um, two camera angles and I can do interviews and all sorts of things. Okay, one of the downsides of using phones is the inbuilt sound is awful. That's an easy fix. And what I use is one of these little things. And it is a Rode lavalier microphone. Uh, you can, you'll obviously need an adapter if you're using an iPhone just plugs in there, <coughs> clips on, and gives you really professional sound. So if you're going to use a phone to shoot video, always, always use an external microphone. Because if you, if you use it without, it's gonna sound really tinny. If you use it with the external mic, it's gonna be really nice, clear crystal sound, and it will tend to block out some of the background. So, awesome. I still shoot lots and lots of my uh, LinkedIn videos and Facebook videos and things using a phone. The other thing to bear in mind using a phone, and I'll start dropping things on the floor now to get them out of the way, there's nothing worse than camera shake when you're watching a video. 
Um, and you'll see a lot of these with people who are not used to doing it and, the, and they've got you know their phone on a stick and it's kind of wobbling around a bit. I watched someone's video the other day which was really interesting but after about 30 seconds I started to feel sick because it was bouncing around so much. So two vital things when you're shooting video. Good quality sound. Sound is actually more important than the vision, believe it or not. And the other thing is don't have a, an image that's bouncing around a lot. How do you get around that? With one of these. There are thousands of different models of this sort of thing. I like these. It's called a, a Gorilla Pod. Gorilla Pod? Yeah, they're called Gorilla Pods. Uh, from Joby, J-O-B-Y. Um, they are awesome. This little one comes complete with an attachment for a phone. You just clip in your phone. You know, you could be sitting at the airport or on your desk. You've got that set in front of you. Just pose the shot. You've got your microphone. You're getting studio quality sound and vision. Uh, you know, you can stick it around a lamppost. When I'm off hiking, I use these. I'll stick it around a tree or a lamppost and kind of do a talk to camera. So <clears throat> if you are very new to creating videos um, and you're wondering what to use, dead easy. You've got a phone. Uh, these in Australia I think are about $80 Australian and the little microphone thing is about $90 Australian. So there you go. You're off and running. <laughs> Use your phone. It's not a problem. So that's that one. Okay. <clears throat> you may then feel that you want to step up a level and start doing some different things because, you know, shooting videos is pretty cool. Um, if you're into equipment like I am, you know, you think, oh, that'd be nice. Uh, what's the next level up? Um, probably this. Uh, this is not the next one I bought. Uh, the next one I bought, I'm actually shooting with. But this is what most people go for. And um, you might think it's a DSLR camera, which stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex. Um, <clears throat> and all that means is, the Single Lens Reflex means that you look in the iPad, in the eyepiece and you're actually looking through the lens so kind of what you see is what you get I mean all cameras are like that these days believe it or not when I started uh, photography they were twin lens <laughs> reflex you actually had one lens that you looked through and another lens that took the picture um, now they're single lens reflex and digital these produce fantastic video and I take this a lot with me when I'm out and about traveling uh, let me just click this one off its stand if I can remember how to do it. Uh, where's this one go? Yeah, it's over here. Let me just pull this off. Yeah, where's the button? Around there. So pull that off the uh, tripod. So yeah, these are really good. Uh, I've got a couple of lenses for this. Um, this is a, I don't know, 7 to 200 zoom or something like that. What is it? No, it's a 12 to 40. Um, and there's another one which is a, a very wide angle. The difference with this one is it's smaller than a normal DSLR. Uh, I didn't want a big DSLR with lots of features that I was going to find difficult to use. So this is a smaller one and what it's called is a micro four thirds um, and uh, it's basically a little compact DSLR. The only downside is the image sensor is smaller. So the sensor in there is actually smaller than a big DSLR. So what? Um, well, it just means that if you're really sure of shooting pro type videos, can't get that on because of this base plate. Um, if you're shooting pro type videos, you will probably want a bigger sensor. Uh, you get more light in, you get a better quality image and all that kind of thing. The sensor on this <coughs> compared to that is huge. So, you know, whilst this shoots really great quality, uh, they're not great in low light and things like that, this will be sensational compared to a phone. Um, so it, it is, you know, primarily designed for taking still photographs, but most cameras of this type now are also brilliant at video. The only thing I would say is when you are picking one, make sure you have an external video uh, port because just like the phones, the microphones built into these are crap. So you want to be able to plug something in, either like that little lav, lavalier mic, and this one has a mic input, 
Uh, if I'm buying cameras, I'm always saying, does it have a mic input? Does it have a mic input? You know what? I'd love to have one of those little tiny compact cameras. Uh, you know, it's about the, well, oh, probably about half the size of that body, just this bit. Um, but the problem is most of them don't have a mic input. And so no use to me because I shoot video. Um, that's why I go with something like this. So it's either this or the, or the, or the phone. But if you're going to shoot video, it's got to have a microphone input because you've got to have much better sound. So how do you get that better sound? Well, uh, I'm just looking around at what I've got here. One option is the um, wireless setup that I'm using here, and I'll show you that in a second. The other option, of course, is a shotgun mic. <clears throat> and shotgun mics are pretty good. You basically just clip that onto the top of the camera, you're plugging that into the microphone port, and there you go, you've got very good sound quality. This one is a Rode, I love Rode mics, I, I forget exactly what this one's called, I think it's the Rode Video Mic Pro. Um, what's this on the top? This is known in the industry as a dead cat, uh, funnily enough on the small microphones they're sometimes called dead kittens. The dead cat is really important, particularly if you're outside, because it cuts down on wind noise. The wind noise doesn't get through to the microphone, so if you're buying a shotgun mic, you know, don't skimp, buy the dead cat as well. I think this one just pulls off, let me have a look, yeah. There's the mic underneath. It's actually got a, uh, a foam cover that's stuck inside the dead cat, so we'll put the dead cat back on. Um, but yeah, the, these are really good. Um, look, I'm, I'm not a real techie person. Um, I probably use 5% of the features on this. And in fact, sometimes I find the menu system really confusing. So I, I use it on really basic settings. Um, so this is the camera, if you've seen on my channels, if I'm out, you know, driving out in the country or something, this is the one that I shoot on. Um, and the big benefit of this camera that I like is not only is it reasonably small, but I can get great shallow depth of field. That's the benefit of DSLRs. So if I want to have a shot where just I'm in focus and maybe there's a landscape behind me and that's all blurred, and the reason you do that is to make your subject stand out, this is perfect for it. So you know, with the right aperture setting, you can do that. Um, but you know, this, I don't know, I reckon most people who, like YouTubers and so on, most people probably use this type of camera. It'll, it'll be a bigger, beefier one, a proper DSLR, what they call full frame, not this micro four thirds, it's a smaller sensor. Um, but these are really awesome, fantastic. You know, you shoot 4K on that. So <clears throat> on your phone, funnily enough, if we're talking about um, resolution, this phone will shoot 4K. Um, which at the time of shooting this, which is April 2020, um, you kind of don't need that if you're uploading to YouTube. Uh, HD, full HD, high definition is, is enough, that's 1080p. Um, 4K is kind of a bit overkill and you end up with huge files. But the benefit of shooting 4K, oh, I'm going to start getting a bit technical here, sorry. The benefit of shooting 4K is that you can crop, you can go in and zoom right in and still get fantastic quality video. So. That's, that's one plus. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the little DSLR. Uh, tripod's really important. Um, I've, I've got a whole range of tripods. This is a sort of a mid-sized one. Don't get something that's too flimsy that's gonna fall over. Uh, I find this adequate for my little DSLR. Uh, and for most tasks, <coughs> I've got much bigger ones for the, for the other cameras. Uh, okay, so we've done phone, little DSLR, and now what am I shooting this on? Well, I'm shooting this on one of these. <clears throat> so this is now getting a little bit more professional. It's not quite a professional video camera, but it's getting there. Um, and this is what I generally use in my studio in the office. So <clears throat> back in the studio, obviously I'm shooting this at home because of the uh, lockdown. Back in the studio, uh, in the office, I have a, a proper studio with a green screen and, and I have two of these cameras, this one and that one, and they're permanently set up there, which is great. So I can just walk in, turn them on and shoot a video. Um, what do I like about these? They're, they're reasonably simple to use. Again, I'm not a professional. Um, it took me a while to learn the settings on this that I use. And again, I'm probably using five or 10% of the features, to be honest. I, I'm just using what I need. I've got a great tip, <laughs> which was to tape up the things, you know, set them and then tape them up so you don't go moving the settings. Um, what's good about this? It shoots really great quality video. Um, the big thing, yes, the big thing, 
this little housing on the top, it takes XLR inputs. This is an XLR input. This is basically a professional microphone fitting, this type of thing, XLRs. Why do you want that? Well, my first video camera, probably eight or ten years ago, was a lot smaller than this, and it was probably, uh, you know, like a sort of thing you'd take on holidays, little camcorder. You, it would take an external microphone, uh, but just the little three and a half mil jack, um, and it, it was pretty limited in its use. If you want really good sound quality, and particularly if you're going to shoot at seminars, if, if you're going to shoot a lot of videos in, in a little studio, you want to be able to connect professional audio equipment, and that means you need XLR inputs generally. The other nice thing is with this one, it'll take two, so I can put two microphones on one camera, and I can individually set the sound inputs on both of those, as well as on these. Um, so that's really good. It, um, it has two SD cards that it records to, um, so when one's full it'll uh, go on to the second card. Uh, alternatively I can record on both at the same time, so I'll get a backup. Um, it's awesome, it has a little, uh, little remote, so what I do is I set up here ready to go, um, and then I just press the button and start talking to you. It's got a little cue light here, the red light comes on and I know it's running. Um, the other thing which I'll probably, let me try and show you, <laughs> I wasn't planning on doing this, but let's see if I can shoot a picture of me shooting myself. You'll understand why in a second. Here we go. Um, let me just put that back up recording as regularly. Okay, we've got a card in there. What I'm going to do is show you what's happening behind here, and we'll edit that in. So there we go. Let's. Okay, we're recording on that one now. So. You can now see the camera that I'm recording myself with, but what I wanted to show you is what's behind that camera. There's a little TV screen. And why is that cool? Well, because these, these little monitors are great, but they're quite small, um, and my eyesight's not brilliant. So what, what I can see in the monitor is the sound levels, I can see that the, the recording is actually running, um, you know, I can play with all the settings on the menu, but it doesn't really help me when I'm shooting like this, particularly with two cameras, to see exactly what's in frame and what's in focus. And so what I do, you'll notice there's two, uh, da, 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 da. let me just make sure, yeah, you've got two screens there, I'm only using one at the moment. So what I do is I, I have a couple of cheap little TVs and I connect those in as monitors. And because I'm doing it all myself, I don't have a camera person, it enables me to see exactly what's on screen. And so before I turn, turned on record, I could just make sure that there's no weird stuff in the background and the, everything's framed correctly. It just makes it a lot easier for me to see. So there we go. Um, while I've got this second little camera running, I'll show you the lighting setup because lights are really important too, of course. Um, so I could I could shoot this here in my living room just with the room lights, but it would kind of look a little bit dingy. Um, and so if you want really professional looking videos, you need some decent lights. Um, you, you don't have to spend a lot of money on lights. The, the kit I'm about to show you, I think was about $200 complete. So. Louis, my editor, is going to hate the way I do this, but I'm going to rip this one off here and I'm going to hand hold it and just whiz it around the room so you can see the lights. So what we've got up here, I've got one uh, fill light, which is providing a little bit of light on one side. I've got another main light just there. And up there, I've got a light over the top of my head. So generally, you want three lights when you are... Uh, filming a person. So I think they generally call it the key light, which is the main one. There's the uh, a fill, just to make sure that you know, you're know you not all lit on one side and shadow on the other. So this one is brighter than that one. And then a hair light, just to separate the subject from the background. Uh, so a little bit of light there. Look, you, do you need it? <laughs> no, you don't need all of that stuff. I'm just showing you what I've got, that's all. Why is this flashing at me? I'm going to turn this one off. Okay, that was just showing you what's going on behind. So these, these are the cameras that I really like. This one is a Canon XA20, uh, so that's a few years old now. The other one is an XA30, a bit more modern, but it looks and fit functions exactly the same. Um, 
you're probably wondering how much these things are. So let me tell you, uh, the phone obviously you know. This camera, so these are in Australian dollars. I think this camera with a, a small lens was about twelve hundred dollars. Uh, these microphones I think are about two hundred and fifty dollars Australian. Everything of course is cheaper in America. Um, these cameras I think were just under two thousand dollars Australian each. Uh, the new ones I, th I think are about two thousand two hundred. Um, decent tripods, look good ones. I think this one was 150 something like that. <coughs> good ones, I wanted sort of heavier ones and, and these ones have kind of more features for, for these cameras so they, they move around in lots of different ways, they can be set up in lots of different ways. Uh, these are like 250 each or something. Um, while I'm showing you all this stuff, please, please don't get the idea that you need this stuff. I, I've been shooting videos a while and I just like stuff. I like, you know, playing around with gadgets and things. Let me just remind you, you can shoot perfectly good YouTube videos and social media videos on these. I'm just, people just ask, what do I use? So I'm showing you. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention was the audio. So audio is really important. Remember, on your phone, use an external microphone, just a little plug-in lavalier, as they call them, on, on a cable. Uh, we talked about the shotgun mic. You can even get versions of this to put on a phone. Uh, just be aware that with shotgun mics, you've got to be a little bit careful how you use them because if I'm interviewing you there and I'm pointing the shotgun mic at you, I have to be aware of what's behind you because it's going to pick up all the sound behind you as well. You know, it's very sort of focused like that. So you've got to be a little bit careful about what's behind you. But, you know, out in the wide open spaces and stuff, these are great. Um, what did I say? A couple of hundred dollars, something for that. And then the other option for sound is the one that I'm wearing now. And this, I forget what they call it, it's another Rode microphone. Uh, it's the Rode Link, I don't know, Movie Maker or something. Uh, these are a few years old, I have a couple of these. Um, so I, I'll generally have one on each camera because I use two cameras in the studio. Um, or I might, if I'm just using one camera, put two mics on the one camera. Why would I do that? Backup sound. Uh, because I'm having to shoot this all myself, I'm always a little bit worried that something's not going to come out, uh, that, you know, maybe the sound's not right or the vision's not right. So I generally in the studio will always shoot with two cameras and I'll put sound on each camera. So I've, I've got the backup. Um, although we've started, if you look at some of my earlier videos, you'll see that we kind of switch from A cam to B cam. We've started just using the A camera more because it's just distracting, flicking across all the time. And that's the other reason I have this little TV monitor. So um, apologies if I'm glancing across, I'm just making sure that the sound levels are right and I can also see that the battery on the camera is all right and that kind of stuff. So these are awesome. This is the bit that the talent wears. The talent is the person in front of the camera and it can clip on your belt and that kind of thing. You can hide the, the cable somewhere. Uh, and then, so that's the transmitter and then the receiver sits on the camera and just plugs in there. It can either plug in with an XLR or it's got the little three and a half mil jack as well. So uh, sound is so important on, on videos, so, so important. Um, if, if you were weighing up, you know, do I buy a really expensive camera uh, and, and cheap microphones, I'd do it the other way around, get really good sound equipment. People will put up with rough and ready vision because they're used to you know stuff being shot on people's phones and everything what turns people off is bad sound if i can't you know if it's hard to hear and, and things like that so i don't know comment below if you if you think it's that's the wrong way to look at it so that's the camera gear what else have we got ah lighting we talked a little bit about lighting uh so these are studio lights obviously they're um you know powered by mains power uh, these are little battery lights so these are from Niwa. How do they spell that? I think it's N E W A R. They're really cheap, available on Amazon and eBay and stuff like that. Just little battery powered lights. So I use these when I'm traveling. Um, you can see here I've got it on a, a la larger Gorilla Pod. So this is the Gorilla Pod that I use for my little DSLR camera. Really great. Um, yeah. <laughs> If you haven't realized already, this stuff can get a little bit addictive. Um, okay, so that's it, I think. We've talked about tripods, we've talked about cameras, we've talked about lights, we've talked about sound. 
Um, we do have to talk about editing. And uh, I got this as a bit of a joke initially. So it's a clapboard, if you're wondering. Uh, why do I want to have a clapboard? Well, a couple of reasons. One, I don't edit my own videos. I confess. So I will talk about editing software in a second, but I, I don't edit my own videos. I shoot that many videos. And look, I, I run five businesses. Uh, I just have an interest in shooting videos. I haven't got the time to do the editing. I, I used to way back, uh, but now I have a couple of full-time editors and they work in our virtual assistant business in the Philippines. So they will be editing this. Um, they are awesome. So yeah, we shoot that many videos. I've got two full-time editors. Um, but this is really important for the editors. So first of all, it, it shows them, uh, basically, I mean, I could fill all of this out, but it tells them which channel it's going to go on, uh, what, what the video is about, when it was shot. And then because I'm very often using two cameras, the really important bit is when it's all set up, I do this. Why do I do that? Very simple. If I don't, it's very hard to synchronize the sound between the two cameras. So you imagine you've got two, uh, two video tracks in your editing suite and you're trying to line up the audio. Um, it's pretty hard without uh, something to synchronize the sound. So another way of doing it is this. You know, so, so the camera can see it. So there's a visual and a, an audio thing. Um, I use this because I can write on there as well. So one of those is handy. That's a little bit big to carry around. Um, so I had a mini one which broke, <laughs> but this is enough because I'll generally say, Louis, uh, this video is going to go up on such and such a channel. We're all ready to go. And it gives him the sound synchronization. Um, I think that's about it. I've run out of equipment. Well, I haven't. There's a few other bits. I've got a drone over there. Um, drones are awesome. <laughs> Uh, I use a DJ, DJI, uh, what is it, uh, Mavic Pro Zoom, uh, yeah, so that's, that's an awesome drone. I thought I was going to use it a lot, I don't actually, um, so I probably ought to use it a bit more. So most of my videos are shot in the studio. Uh, you'll see back in my channels, some of the earlier ones were shot outside. I must go and do that more, I think it's a bit more interesting, and then we can do some, some drone shots as well. Okay, I think that's about it. So, uh, ah, editing software. So what can you use for editing software? Look, I'm, I'm really not up to speed. What I will do is I will ask my editors what they're using um, and we'll find out, you know, what are, what are some different um, editing packages that you could use. I mean, even there, there is editing software on your phone, you know, if you want to do rough editing. Um, I would just say that you want proper editing software if you're going to do things a little bit more complicated. So I'm, I'm going to be having to, well, not me, but Louis will be editing uh, footage from that camera and this one, because I use this one to show the lights. So he's got to edit those together. Um, and he's only got one soundtrack, so that's not too bad. So if you're doing you know, multiple cameras, multiple soundtracks, you've got to have professional software so you can kind of bring them all into the software and you can you know, cut and paste and, and do all the stuff that you want to do. I, very occasionally I'll edit a, a simple video and I use a product called Camtasia, which is not expensive. Um, I think it might be $100 or something, but that's kind of gives you a little entree into how to edit properly without being overly complicated. You just drag in the files onto a onto the time track and you can do quite simple edits. Um, if you want to get more complicated, then you're getting into things like Adobe Premiere and um, was it, uh, what's the Sony one? Sony Video Cut Final Pro or something. Um, there's a few different ones, but I'll, I'll ask our editors what they use and I'll put some links down below to, to tell you some free ones, some cheapy ones and some more expensive ones. Well, this has gone a bit longer than I expected. Uh, so <laughs> apologies for that, but I get so many questions um, about the video equipment. I thought I'd just show you all the stuff that I've got. And I know I've said it before, but you don't need all this stuff. You need your phone, you need a little microphone and a Gorillapod and you're off. That's all you need. Honestly, that's all you need. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the big time YouTubers that I watch, um, you know, uh, who is it? Um, Sonny, Le uh, Sonny, Le Sonny Lenarduzzo, 
Canadian lady. She, she has a great channel on uh, about Instagram stuff. This is what she used to begin with. She's got millions of followers. Uh, she's only recently gone to using, you know, something like this little DSLR. Um, so don't feel pressured that you have to use fancy equipment. You don't. This is enough. Um, and use natural light. Maybe if you're shooting at home, sit near a window so the light's coming in from the side. Perfectly okay. The only reason I have all of this stuff is I do a lot of seminars, and so I use these sort of semi-pro equipment uh, gear at seminars. My wife actually shoots all the video uh, if, I, if I don't have a pro videographer. Um, and the other reason I have these is because I shoot so many videos. I, I have it set up in a little studio in the office permanently, and I can just walk in, I turn the lights on, turn the cameras on, clap, and I'm off. And I might shoot six videos and, and then back into the, my office and work. So that, that's the only reason. So please, please, please don't feel you need lots of equipment. You don't. It's you know what they always say about cameras? It's the user, not the equipment, and that is so true. I, I am so amateur. Um, you know, even fancy equipment doesn't help me shoot really good videos. Um, you can do, you know, just as well better on a phone. So there we go. If you have um, any questions, do post them below. Uh, I'll try to answer them. As I said, I'm not uh, really a pro at this, uh, but I can maybe point you in the right direction. Um, and I will remember to, uh, to get those editing software names and so on from our editors and I'll post those down below as well. So thank you for watching. Bit longer this week, I'm sorry, but uh, I thought I might as well just cover everything um, and hopefully that, that's helped you. So final thing, don't forget if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, do subscribe. Hit the little uh, red subscribe button. If you hit that bell, you'll get an email notification telling you when we have new videos and when do the new videos come out? Generally on a Wednesday every week. So if there are particular topics you'd like to hear about, do post them in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.